Hey you freaks, it's JJ and I got my husband Joe here. Today we are going to be reviewing Coheed and Cambria's coffee. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay, he's kind of grumpy because he hasn't had his coffee yet. <laughs> so, I'm going to try and power through the beginning part and then get him drinking coffee and then we can talk about it after. Um, do you want to start with the knowledge or the beast? Um, let's do knowledge. Knowledge? Okay. Oh, I like that. I like their pool tab. Most coffee just like rip off the top and it mm -hmm. just, the flavor doesn't stay in. So I normally don't drink coffee because it gives me anxiety. Um, but every once in a while I do. And so this is one of those once in a while. I don't know how much to put. That's enough. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do you know, do you know what the knowledge in the beast is? Like, do you know what that is? In reference to Coheed and Cambria? Mm, no, but oh. it looks like... Um, what do you think it is, if you were to guess? One of those blots? Yeah, the Rorschach. Yeah. yeah. But it's... like but like in the Coheed and Cambria universe, the, the Amory Wars, no idea? Mm -hmm. So the beast is Coheed and the knowledge is Cambria. Okay, I, so, think, I think I did know that. Okay, yeah. Clearly you don't watch my videos, do you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wait, which one are we start? Oh, we're starting with the knowledge. So we're starting with Cambria. So uh, if any of you don't know, uh, click on to, I'll put a link somewhere here and down in the description for my uh, playlist about the Coheed and Cambria uh, stories explained if you want a, like a quick overview of, you know, like the stories behind the albums and the characters that go along with the coffee as well. So I'll link that somewhere down in the description. But basically, uh, the knowledge represents Cambria of Coheed and Cambria, and they are a husband and wife duo who have superpowers and uh, defeat evil. Oh, and so we, I didn't get the uh, pre-order in time for the mugs. So those were back ordered, and so they're gonna be a couple more weeks, but I wanted to do this review, so we just have regular cups, sorry. But I did order the Coheed cups, in case you're wondering. I don't feel like that's dark enough. It looks kind of light. Mm -hmm. I don't think I put enough grounds in. It's like not that dark. You definitely put enough grounds in. It's very light. I think that's what it says on here, actually. The knowledge. Direct trade African South American coffees. Smooth, bold coffee flow with a delicate, balanced taste. Oh, and I got, also got the ground, the pre-ground version because ain't no one got time for grinding beans. Oh, I do. And it's loud and annoying. I like that it's not like I don't feel like I'm going to just like be cracked out after this. Even though I probably will. What do you see in the Rorschach? Oh, I think I see knowledge. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Seriously, what do you see? Um, I don't know. These, these things are all meant to already see something, right? You see what you want to see. Yeah. But behind it, it already, like, the doctor already knows what you should see and what you should not see, right? No, I think they just interpret what you see. Like, if you're like, that looks like murder, and, like, all of them, they're like, oh, this guy likes murder, or this guy's got some issues with mm. murder. I don't know. I don't know. If anyone knows anything about that, drop that in the comments, because clearly we have no idea how any of that works. But what do you see? I see, like, a battle happening. Mm -hmm. And um, in between it, so, like, these are two clashing sides, right? And they're fighting over right here is like an American flag, but inside of the American flag, there's a sword, and that's like the heel of the sword, hilt, 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 hilt of the sword, and it's and it actually goes all the way through these two clashing, clashing guys are fighting over hmm. the sword. I don't see that at all. Hmm. So I see, um, like this dude. I see a dude right here. And he's, like, standing over, like, a pool of, like, a puddle of water. Okay. Like, maybe some, like, creepy house that is, like, flooded and, like, I don't know, you know, like, one of those, like, dream, scary dreams. And he's, like, standing... Ooh, yeah. Yeah, he's, like, standing over, um, like, a puddle on the floor that's reflecting him. And it's, like, dark and, like, horror-y. That's what I see. Like, yeah, okay, I see it. Yeah? Like, he did something in that water and it's like reflecting what he's done in yeah his or maybe it's like blood or something yeah but how like cool reflecting. is that yeah. that's a cool story yeah you're welcome way better than my stupid <laughs> ass story. oh it's a sword people find <laughs> oh you're in a better mood now that you have coffee i was looking at your sword back here earlier maybe that's why i saw it oh did you want to plug the the gift you got me you're welcome 
<laughs> you can show them if you want to show them the sword. So, okay, I recently got really into watching Forged in Fire on Netflix, and it's a great show. You guys should watch it. It's basically, they, it's like a reality competition where they make swords. They, like, it's just cool. But anyway, when they make Damascus, it's basically like Valyrian steel, like from um, Game of Thrones. But I don't know if they can see it. It has like hundreds of layers all like folded over on there. So those are all different layers of metal, all those little wavy things. And they like fold it over like a bajillion times to make it stronger. Ooh, that's oily. Anyway, because I have the greatest husband in the world, he got me a sword that was made of Damascus, which is super cool. Has nothing to do with coheed or coffee or anything. Just that. No, it did. That it did. I'm a nerd and I like swords. <laughs> it did because that's what I saw in there, and I'm I'm thinking because that's what I saw this morning. Like I was looking at your sword when I just mm -hmm. sat down. Oh, that's probably why you saw and that. And so I think I saw the sword in that picture because I just saw it hanging right there. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I think you're playing mind games on me now. Yeah. I'm actually getting to like this coffee the more I drink it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so, the coffee that we normally drink at home, or whenever I decide to be all fucking crazy and cracked out, um, is like pure uh, espresso mm -hmm. grounds. So it's like intense. We call it our crack coffee because that's what it feels like when you drink it. Um, so this is like a nice light, it's good. light, a gentle wake up in the morning. Not like, let's fucking go, <laughs> yeah. go to Mosh. This is, um, I feel like campfire coffee like when you're just sitting around with a bunch of your friends in the morning pissed off at each other because it's cold outside mm. <laughs> i just think it chris and and coop oh last festival bloodied up oh god and... yeah watch my um exit 111 vlog if you guys are interested <laughs> i think great. i posted that on here i'm pretty sure i did um anyway oh you're not wearing a coheed shirt nope. i just realized that i wore my friends my, i literally woke up this is my pajama shirt you done fucked up, Johnson. That's your fault. This is your thing. <laughs> well, you were all grumpy. I didn't want to make you change your shirt because you were all grumpy this morning. Anyway, do you want to know more about Cambria and how she... Well, I don't know like what like what their thought process was on, on like how she inspired this particular flavor of coffee. But basically, the story goes that... The key work... So, or, so, okay, Like sorry. the code? No, 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 so... What's the key work? The key work is, is this. It's, it's the... Oh, um, okay, okay. The planets are all held together okay. in this triangle. And so um, they destroy it, so then the planets They, like, like break away. off, and then uh, Cambria actually uh, saves some of them at the end. She kind of puts them back together so that not everyone dies, only, like, a lot of people die. <laughs> Dude, how cool is that? Yeah. So, so, so you're But they're me... both, like, they both end up going bad, but she kind of, like, saves, saves what's left. So they both go bad. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they rip apart the planetary system, right? That's what the keyword is. Yes. It's like a bunch of different planets stuck yeah. together, right? Mm -hmm. 74, and so, 72. 74. So they rip apart this planet system. So the the keyword is like a machine that's kind of holding them no, all the together. No, the keyword is this magical or like a sun or something. No, the keyword is this magical um su uh, substance that holds the planets together. So um, I'll throw a picture up. There's a great picture in the comics that has like this blue light type of thing that connects all the planets together and keeps them from drifting off into space and using their own uh, like gravity to form like real solar systems. Mm. Um, it's like this blue magical stuff. And also then when we go into Afterman, which is like a kind of like a prequel, like side story in the Amory Wars universe, um, we have a character who goes into the key work and it's basically like an alternate dimension. Whoa. Like you can travel to... Uh, kind of like this purgatory place and also from there make it to like heaven or like the, this paradise land so from being within the keywork. But the keywork is also being held together by like souls. And so, this Whoa. yeah, the keywork is actually made of like all these tortured souls and that uh, Willem Ryan is actually harvesting them to um, like feed off of the keywork energy. But it's all like, uh, it's kind of like a living entity is what the keywork is. Yeah. And what happened to him? Uh, he dies. She dies too. Spoiler alert. They both die. Mm. Okay. I made him change his shirt. <laughs> okay. So now we are going to go on and try the beast. What kind of coffee is this supposed to be? It says, coffee with a bite. A pleasantly balanced blend of direct trade African and South American coffees with a kick of espresso. Do you think they went to these places and tried them? How cool would that be to go like... Well, I don't think they actually went to, like, Africa. South Africa and tried it? <laughs> no, I think they, you know, had the coffees available to them, and then they picked what ones they want. Oh. 
I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Tell me when to stop. Whenever you, whenever you decide. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So, what are you expecting this to taste like? I'm hoping that it's it's gonna be really, really dark and strong. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, because that one was on the lighter side, and I think mm -hmm. if what I'm thinking is how they did the bag, you know, that that mm -hmm. one's more like the lighter side, and this one's just like intense. Yeah, I hope this one's like, bam. Yeah, in, in your face. face. Um, so uh, Coheed is cool because he has these like he can turn his arm to like this cannon gun mm -hmm. and then he has like the big swords that like come out of his other arm so i'm expecting it to be pretty badass i mean uh cambria is badass too because she has like mind powers oh cool. so that's why they call her the knowledge and then they call him the beast because he's the like big and beastly oh, there you go <laughs> I guess. Perfect. and so the, okay so there's actually three of them so inferno is the other one so they usually call him the um kbi kind of like the kgb which makes me laugh. But so that like the knowledge of the beast and then Inferno, which is their uh brother. Sort oh. of. Sort of. I mean they're they're they were made, so they're not like like genetically related, but well I mean I guess technically they could be. But they're robots, so But these two are like in love with each other, right? Yeah. So like like she was made for him, kinda of like an Adam and Eve oh. situation. And then they were just like, uh, eh, just give him this other little guy. No, well, um Inferno came first. He was the first one. Oh. And then he I think he ha actually helped make these two. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So he's like their dad. Sort of, yeah. Well, it, they call they call uh, Coheed and Inferno. I mean, um, yeah, Coheed and Inferno. They call them brothers. Oh. So like Inferno's <laughs> real name is Jesse. Like brothers, like like brothers in arms, like brothers. No, they call them like literal brothers. Oh wow. Yeah. I think you put too much water in there. I didn't. I feel like you did. Ooh, I think I like this one better. What do you think? I still think you diluted it too much with too much water, but I think I like the flavor I better. I already put five scoops for these little cups. Oh, that is good. With the half and half. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about what you see in here. Oh, man. That's intense. I definitely see... I see a huge skull right here, right? Mm -hmm. Looking down on the earth, like those old-time video game maps you used to play. I guess you wouldn't know that. No. Like old time video game maps of the world, you know, and how it had like the circles on it. But then I also see that inside the skull, there's these two little eyes. Like it's not really something that big, you know? It's a smaller dude who's actually like taking over the world or, or planning on doing something cool. Hmm. Or yeah, like, th like that could be like Willem Ryan. Yeah, like taking over a planet or something. I saw something different earlier before you started talking about it. Now, <clears throat> now, now that's all I can see. Um, it really reminds me of the Melioria, Meliora al uh, album from Ghost. Mm. Like the cover. Look, it even has little circles there with the guy. I don't know. So you just said that he stole from Ghost. No, I'm just saying that's what it reminds me of. Like it looks like Papa is going like this, you know. But maybe that's just because I'm writing some Ghost fan fiction right now. So mm -hmm. maybe that's all I see. It's really cool. I like I like this bag. Better? What about the, the coffee? Do you, which one of these two, coffee-wise, um, do you like? I'm, I'm probably going to go with the red one as well. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I like the Beast better just because I'm more used to having super crazy strong coffee. Yeah, yeah I think so. That, like, kicks you in the face. But face. now it's not, Maybe it's this... not like I don't like this one, yeah. you know? I just, I like lighter. this one a little better. Um, I still think we made it a little bit too diluted. Mm. Hmm. Right. It could. I feel like it could be because we used the this thing yeah. instead of like an actual like coffee maker. Maybe. I don't know. We should get a French press. Those are good. That actually, I feel like this would be good in a French press. Yeah. See. Because I saying. think it needs more time to, to like sit. Mm -hmm. get it coffee. -y. Uh, we are gonna get some some more band coffees. Mm, so yes. these these are gonna be in the uh, in the judging. Yeah. So of these two, this is this is the winner, but they'll. We'll have a more. So, yeah, I've been um, planning to do a whole, like, metal coffee review here. It's just um, annoying because it's kind of expensive. And some of them, like, just don't ship to the U.S. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so there's a few, like, I know um, uh, David Elfson from Megadeth has his own coffee and Corn has their own coffee. Um, and then someone else that I was able to get in the U.S. But a lot of them, like, they just, they don't ship internationally. And if they do, it's, like, $50. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. If you guys want to pay for it, that would be great. <laughs> 
<laughs> or if you guys know of anyone else that uh, is making coffee that she didn't just list, you mm-hmm. can just text her or whatever. Yeah. But make sure it's actually available because a lot of the time I've done uh, tr- been trying to do a lot, of re- a lot of research on like metal coffees and like all these bands have their own coffees and you get to the website and they're like, yes, it's here. And then you try and order it and then like you get through the whole process. And then when it gets to like the delivery, it's like, oh, sorry, we don't offer it in your area. Mm-hmm. So make sure it's actually available in Nashville, Tennessee. Like, say or somewhere. beer. Or beer. Yeah. So uh, Cody and Kimberly did come out with their own beer. Uh, they had an IPA that came out a while back. Oh, she had yeah. IPA? So Let's I was do this. I was trying to get a hold of it. They don't make it. They only made it like for like a really short amount of time and then they wouldn't ship it over here. Um, but I heard that it was not good because something happened with the canning process and like oh, it was yeah. like oxidized or something. I don't yeah. know. Whatever. But I heard that it like went bad really fast. And so no one has it anymore. And if they do, it's not any good. It's bad. Dang. That um, sucks. Which sucks because I love, we love IPAs. And it would have been awesome to try that. But maybe if they come out with, with another one sometime soon, that would be cool. Definitely. Anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of Coed and Cambria's coffee. If you ordered it, if you tried it, uh, let me know your thoughts. And then also, if you have any other suggestions for videos that you want me to do in the future, drop that in the comments as well. I do take video suggestions. Um, and if you want to follow me, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And then if you want to be my friend, then go down to the description and go to my website, kymorris.com, and sign up for my newsletter. Anyway, thanks for watching, freaks. Till next time.